Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, today we are going to be talking about another form of how molecules can move across that cell membrane. Uh, today we are going to be talking about active transport, all right, which is in a lot of ways the opposite of the original one, or the first one we were talking about, which is uh, passive transport or diffusion. This kind of works in a lot of the opposite ways. And so uh, let's talk a little bit about or give an example of how that works. Um, and then we'll show how it works and how it's different than uh, diffusion. So a couple things to keep in mind is uh, remember how diffusion works, uh, about molecules going from high to low, uh, no outside energy, and talk about how that compares to active transport as we go here. So let's use an example here, all right? Let's use an example of, uh, let's start with some, obviously our cells here. I drew some intestinal cells here. So let's say we have our digestinal tract here. All right, and we have some intestinal cells. These intestinal cells, notice that are a very funny shape. And it's because the main function of the intestinal cells is to absorb as many nutrients from the stomach lining as possible, or the intestinal tract. Um, and so to do that, they need lots of phospholipid bilayer to, that allows things in and out of the cell. And so they have a very unique shape to increase the amount of cell membrane in a small amount of volume, so it's kind of folded over. This is a specialized cell. It has a very specific function, and thus its structure is very specialized. It doesn't look like that regular picture because it has uh, the folded membrane on top of each other. Anyway, so then we kind of zoom in onto one of those parts of the membrane. We have that phospholipid bilayer, two, phosph or two rows of phospholipids, right? We have our embedded proteins, and then we have some other, remember that phospholipid bilayer has lots of things in it, like cholesterol to add fluidity. Um, and also has other kinds of proteins. Um, and these ones here, I drew these little proteins. These are signaling proteins that basically are almost kind of like radar detectors or just detectors that are certain things. And let's say, um, let's say while I'm eating, all right, uh, let's say I go to a very urban area. All right, one area that is very, um, Industrialized, uh, the industrialized world uh, has led to uh, certain heavy metals uh, and materials going into our drinking water. And one of the ones that's most dangerous to us is arsenic. All right, arsenic is an element on the periodic table and it's extremely dangerous to the human body. All right, very, 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 very low amounts already exist in our body, but getting a large amount over a short period of time can lead to all kinds of things like, you know, just initially like vomiting. Um, it causes, it basically, once it goes inside your cells, it blocks ATP pathways and it blocks your nerves from firing, which shuts down your nervous system and eventually leads to death. Sounds pretty awful. All right. So let's say I have my picture here. I have the outside of my cell here and the inside of my cell. All right. And let's say, uh, one of my cells, uh, as I accidentally ingest a lot of arsenic. All right, which is on the periodic table is abbreviated AS. All right, that's what it's abbreviated on the periodic table. All right, and let's say some of it naturally diffuses from a high concentration to a lower concentration and starts to diffuse into my cells. All right. What that does is there is a specific protein that has a very specific structure and function that is going to go off and it's going to say, you have arsenic in your system and we need to remove that. That cell wants to be able to survive so that it can provide a function for the larger organism. All right. And so what we have here is it wants to remove, even just though it has a little bit of arsenic, it wants to remove it from its, uh, from its case. So what it's going to try and do is right here, I have a high concentration of arsenic. Down here, I have a low concentration. Everything we've talked about would say that all this arsenic would rush into my cells. All right. But obviously, we don't want that. That signal is sending off saying, you have too much arsenic in your cells, even if it's just a little. We need to remove that arsenic. We need to go from low to high concentration. All right. And so, what we're going to need is we're going to need help to do that. All right, we're going to need help to make that happen. So we need to, we need to use specialized proteins here in these, or these 
specialized embedded proteins. All right, these ones, these specialized embedded proteins are called protein pumps. All right, these protein pumps, and what they do is they are able to use um, to allow molecules to go from low concentration to high concentration. All right, so now let's think about this though. The very beginning of talking about transport across the membrane, I used the example of a ball rolling down a hill. It takes very little outside energy to make a ball go from high concentration down to low elevation, high elevation down to low elevation. It doesn't really take that much energy. It's called passive transport. All right, but now we're trying to make the ball go from a low elevation up to a high elevation. To make a ball go uphill, we have to put in energy. All right. And the energy required to make this happen is going to come from a molecule called ATP, which we talk a little bit more in a different video in class, all right, about what ATP is. And basically what it is is a molecule that acts as kind of a battery, all right? And so what's going to happen over these eight or to these protein pumps is ATP is going to come, all right? It's going to break off one of its phosphates release energy, all right, energy to that protein to do its job, and when it leaves, it's going to become ADP, right? When it leaves, it's ADP, which is basically almost acts as kind of a dead battery there, all right? When it does that, that ATP provides energy for that molecule, all right? It gives energy to that pump, and outside energy to allow it to go from a low concentration to a high concentration to push the ball up the hill. All right, that ATP uses that chemical energy to make or to allow that protein pump to push the arsenic to go from a low concentration to a high concentration. All right. So let's think about what we've done so far. We have active transport here. All right, we have active transport here. In this case here, we went from a low to high concentration. All right, went from a high to low concentration. We needed outside energy. Needed energy in the form of ATP. But well, in the form of ATP, energy from the molecule ATP. And to do that, we needed a protein pump. We needed a protein pump to do that. So it works in the opposite way, uh, or, or opposite way of passive transport, diffusion, and the fact that it, instead of high to low, it goes low to high, right? Diffusion is no outside energy. This requires outside energy, although it is very similar to di or a facilitated diffusion and the fact that it needs an embedded protein to do this. This is a specific type of protein called a protein pump that allows it to go, uh, that kind of forces it to go in the opposite direction, right? We're trying to basically uh, pull, push the ball up the hill here. We need that energy to do that, and it gets that energy from that ATP molecule. Other than that, a lot of the mechanics are still the same. All right, the fact that we are trying to get things from low to high concentration. All right, that's pretty much it. Active transport's kind of just the opposite of what we've been talking about. So. Uh, hopefully you can kind of look back at it. Look, look back at your notebook. Once you've finished putting this in your notes, look back at your notes on diffusion and see how they look similar and how they are different. All right. Make that comparison. All right. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching. Good luck and may the science be with you.